So what is morphogenesis? Morphogenesis is when uh, you started as a single cell and that cell started like dividing and it like in the beginning it was just like a ball of cells like just dividing dividing until you have a bunch of cells and then like something happens where those cells like start to you get like uh, on the outside of that ball you get a single layer of cells they call them I think epithelial cells or whatever the name is like somehow like all the complex shapes and all the organisms that uh, make you up and they, they weren't there in the beginning like you just have basically undifferentiated cells to begin with they all look the same so the and they all have the same DNA so every cell divides and it has the same DNA so how does a cell know like oh I'm gonna be a brain cell I'm gonna be a muscle cell I'm gonna be the bones so even though they all started they all have the same DNA but somehow like you need those cells to differentiate and know where they are like they need to know if they're next to this uh, this type of cell so one of the ways that the cells do that is that they uh, they exchange chemicals with each other so you know you start to produce signal like chemical signals and those signals should start to propagate like just diffuse around like the chemicals are diffusing around because like s some places the, the chemical concentration will be higher than other just because of the shape of the object because like how things are moving around uh, you start to get a gradient in uh, concentration a gradient just means that something is different from here than here if like if this is hotter than this then you have a gradient in temperature and the gradient is just like the temperature is going up and up and up in this direction okay so there is a gradient in these things the chemicals that the cells start producing and by the gradients maybe the cells start to know okay I'm gonna start producing more of this protein more of that protein and if they start producing different proteins based on where they are then they start to differentiate they know like okay I'm this type of cell I'm that type of cell just by like uh, producing random chemicals and like knowing which proteins are gonna produce and you know produce those proteins based on the concentration of the initial chemicals that you produce so you have this thing it's a ball they start the cells, cells start to differentiate but then like it's just a ball how are you gonna get a human being with all the complex topology it has like an up and down direction you have like here's where the liver is here's where your spine so these cells which let's say are on a ball they start producing something called uh, myosin or like uh, they start producing forces there's these uh, uh, filaments that they can make uh, that uh, like when the two filaments meet like this they can start exerting forces and pushing each other so that's how a cell can create forces and that's how the muscle cells work so when they start producing these filaments they start to push each other and so the cells like now they're all over this uh, sphere and initially like you can treat the think of the cells like as a thin layer of fluid fluid is something that flows right so if I push it from here it starts to flow and the cells are sort of like a fluid because they're not like stuck together they can flow past each other so one cell can start to move so they're they're like somewhere in between a solid and a fluid because they can move so they can flow and so when uh, you start to create these forces you start to create flows on this uh, surface where the cells are how do you know to create more force here than here than here like everywhere is a, like the cells started identical so you need to know I need to make more cells here more forces here than here to push it in this direction and if you push it in this direction you know something starts to you know if I push so the cells like are coming here they're being pushed from this direction in that direction they're being pushed and if I push like a, a snap that either goes up or, or down and so they go down like that and this starts to grow and like starts to form folds and where these folds are is like where your spine starts to 
that area becomes your spine and it starts to elongate. So that's how you start to form. So some, based on the chemical concentrations, you'll know that, okay, I need to make more force here, more force here. And now you have a difference in shape. Now you already know this area, after it folds, has more curvature because it's curved like this and it has more forces on it so again the cells in that area can sense that okay I'm being pushed or okay I'm being like I'm curved or there's a force on me so the cell starts to know that okay I'm in this position like now I can produce this set of proteins and now I should uh, start elongating in that direction so even though all the cells have the same DNA they can potentially produce the same set of proteins but just based on where they are and like the chemicals that the other cells around them are producing they know okay I should do this I should only make this set of proteins not those set of proteins and become this type of cell that type of cell this thing which I'm describing where it folds this is sort of like the cell did not have any differentiated shape before there was no shape it was just uh, basically formless or like a sphere and then you start to have this intricate uh, shape with different holes and different like spines and brain and whatever so you start to have a differentiation in shape and that process is called morphogenesis it's uh, morph means shape genesis means creation so it literally means creation of shape this is the what we're trying to understand like the process that you how you can start to form shape when you didn't have shape to begin with and uh, it's cool and so this process morphogenesis happens not just like in like uh, cell tissues you can also think about it in uh, leaves leaves also have to grow and uh, become a certain shape even flowers like the way they open like a flower when it's closed lilies uh, it starts to grow faster here at the edges than than at the center and that creates like this parts wants to expand this parts want to stay the way it is and to do that it opens up and starts to wrinkle on the edges and that if you look at a video of a flower opening you see it opens up and starts to wrinkle that process is controlled by DNA but it also relates to mechanics and forces like if cells divide more along the edges then it will grow and this kind of stuff is also even if you want to think about the growth of a single cell like bacteria bacteria also like E. coli needs to maintain like a its shape has to be like a cylinder all the time and it always even if you force it to deform it grows back to a cylinder after some few generations and so somehow E. coli also needs to sense that oh my shape is not what I want it to be even though there's no like a brain there or there's no intelligence but just by the pattern of growth just by saying insert more cell wall here it automatically happens that the cell wall is more inserted in regions where the curvature is not what you want it to be and that opens them opens them up and brings them to where they want to be anyway this is like a very cool set of problems like how shape emerges and how shape is regulated and it happens everywhere in uh, nature and uh, in biology but it's also an important problem in you know if you want to create uh, smart materials or if you want to uh, create material that uh, sort of always maintain their shape in a smart way automatically you, you might say um, this would be like uh, self-assembly where something where a structure assembles itself by itself without uh, any external uh, thing forcing it to have that shape and so this if you want to engineer things like that you also need to understand this kind of physics so that's that and i will see you next time